So, precision. We did it. We tried it. Didn't like it for MMI series. No, this is not MMI. I'll show you just a moment what is MMI. Alright, what's up, everybody, guys? Uh, Hydrobody's here. Um, you guys said the other, earlier clip. I was just showing you guys me trying and attempting to use precision as my in my mind series. But in reality, in my mind series is gonna be it's gonna be it's gonna be a series about the champions I do play. It. Champions the way I would play it, or with the correct talent, depending on the situation. Here, almost always, almost always, and legitimately, there's no other reason to go any other talent other than death of taxes. Why you ask? Well, it's kind of it's just the ability to have wrecker and cauterize in your belt, and even if they have no shield. So, for example, if they have like an Anara and a Terminus, or just an Anara Soul Tank, right, and no other shields on the team, Death and Taxes still gives you more value than Precision or the other ones. It's like there's usually almost always a healer. Okay, well, Death and Taxes allows you to neglect that healing. You you pretty much make an entire champion useless, right? Death and Taxes. You can also go. Uh, what's I was saying? You can record. But if they have no shield tanks, you can go Haven or you can go Blast Shields to rejuvenate. You have a healer that's healing you now. Or go into any lifestyle cards or you can go Morale Boost and so on. It gives you 1800 credits for free if you look that way. Uh, look at it that way, right? It's 90% cauterized off the back. COD 3, it's the same thing as having 1800 credits just in your pocket for free. That 1800 credits that you spent could be spent on anything else. Anyways, that's why Death and Taxes is so formidable. That's why it's the uh, talent to go. Lack of Eminence, same issue. Eminence is, would have been pretty decent, but uh, for uh, longer range uh, snipe maps, but it's too, whatchamacallit, it's it's just, it's still, I think, inconsistent. Uh, sometimes the damage numbers do not proc uh, always. Precision is very strong, but once again, having to purchase Cauterize and Wrecker is not a good thing. Um, and especially in Dota Torval, you go, you still cauterize, and that shield lasts forever. It just does too much. It's just too impactful. Here, this is the main, the main build. Hold on. We're pausing for a little bit. This is the main speeds, right? I have main position off all these others. Ones his name M M. The loadout back here. Just rewind. Show you this. Eminence. Uh, this is my Eminence build. This is not a test man. I was using for position and main speeds. You still have the uh, manifest destiny, but this is, this is the overall my my favorite and preferred loadout. <clears throat> and the reason it's my preferred main loadout, it, it allows you to disengage and engage into a fight. It uh, it keeps you keeps you safe. Swift Jade will give your um your proc to your grace up more often. Uh, inheritance, uh, ten percent. I can't see any other one value card. Ten percent of any cooldowns. Lean cooldowns are really short, so so that's a plump bonus. And uh, Noble Crest. I like health cards on damage dealers. Um, you have I think twenty one hundred health. With this, would give you twenty three hundred. So with any havens, if you go against a Kanessa, you don't have you don't have you no longer one headshot potential going against Andrew. So it takes him three headshots to take you down. That's a huge win win, um, which is a massive amount of value. Uh, so this is why this preferred card has many variances of this card. People sometimes go Minifits, Destiny Five, Heritor Throne Two, or Four four on those two cards and have less Swift Jade, but the two biggest cards here is Manifest Destiny and Heritage of Throne. Uh, and I recommend always having Noble Crest either four or five. I promise you, it's gonna be huge. It's gonna allow you to trade against champions much more effectively. So let's just go right into the gameplay. Um, so here, a center a center start on a on a map like Serpent Beach is top side of the map. It's called uh, we call it Raptors. And we're gonna call the right side of the map, which has the water. We're gonna call that danger. Okay. So here, standard uh, standard start. We're gonna go up here, Raptors. Make sure nobody can flank us. The reason why this is a good start, you can see if anyone flanks from danger slash point, it gives you a good eyesight. So here we're gonna check. Okay, nobody's coming. Oh, we heard the McCall. You know McCall's there, but now we hear the Andrews. How about our healer and Druggles? All right, look out. You're the sniper. You can help out. You have also auto aim. So you can be a good uh, uh good eyes and ears for your teammates. Here, I made a huge mistake. Right. Well, not personally, my mistake. I, I figured, okay, there's nobody coming left side. I have my con. I have Makola starting there. I'm safe. I put too much faith in my teammates. It happens sometimes. It happens whenever. But a lot of faith. You could always, you always have to be checking your corners and your uh, signs and keeping in the back of your mind. Hey, where's the Makola? Where's the Andrew? Where's the flankers? You know, you gotta keep it in the back of your mind, or this will happen. Right? I took a lot of free damage. He had a one free shot. He almost was in range for a hook. Maybe his hook wasn't a cooldown. 
right? And of course, the reason why I thought I was safe is because we saw it earlier. These two come up. Both of our tanks come up there. So I saw them both. They have been engaged. They weren't engaged on. So we all look, okay, immediately knew there's nobody up there. Let's look for the flank. But if we fast forward here, we dealt with the uh, Andrew, got him to one shot. Do we know we shouldn't even stop staring at him anymore? He's not going to peek. Then McCall got two free shots. Look at our health. Already 900. Huge, huge mistake. But we were able to box him out, scare him away. And here it was somewhat lucky. My uh, the healer was looking at us, which thankfully he was. He was ready, and that's 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 the benefits of being in a position where your healer can come and help. He, he's able to react to any flanks. I'm glad our healer was aware uh, aware of the situation. This doesn't always happen. I just got lucky that my healer was really good at this game. I have no idea why that uh, that shot didn't help, but. Being in an angle in a position where your healer can get you is just huge as in as in there, right? Luck, you know, or you know, position myself well enough so that you know I'm more lucky. Anyways, so we once we won that game engage, we'll we'll move up higher to a more aggressive position and dismount here. Just huge dismount. If you dismount them, it takes a longer to get the point, you get more free shots before they can get to you. And here we're gonna reset right away. That's where we dashed off. We heard the end of dashing to us, we're just gonna re readjust. Uh, usually you don't want to go up here. Okay, so this is really aggressive. <clears throat> this is like a more of a puppy rank game. Uh, here, instead of going up here, which I shouldn't have done, right? We have control of the entire right side and the low ground. We know most of them went left. They're over here. We didn't see them cross right side. We we dismounted three people. We can assume they're going up their raptors. Hmm? This was a mistake. This right here is death trap. I do this a lot. A lot of players do this. You'd be stuck down here. We call this maze or waterfall. Um, and it's a really bad position. So they have the high ground control. We luckily got the healer. But here, see, say there's two or three people looking at me. I'm on low ground. They're going to they're gonna do more damage to me. And I'm just going to lose out the fight. This is not a good position. Taking on the dark side, danger side, would would have been the more safe uh, uh, play. And you can still shoot raptors from danger. But we're okay here. Luckily, it was just a Makoa. And I knew I can take this fight after you missed the hook. See, the Vivian was there earlier, like how quickly I was just been melted. This would have been a safer angle. I think I realized that later on, I came here to finish off the Andro. Timing that Andro. So, so even like from danger, you can st still poke out uh, raptors. So that's the angle I was talking about. So here we go. Now we know we have control raptors. And this is the position you want to, until you get past the first show cold. I like holding this angle. I like poking from this angle. Uh... Counter that Andrew all with your own ultimate. I love doing that. One of the best things you could do. Keep your distance against McCoy. Make it hard for him. Head his shots slash uh, head his hooks. We're now we're winning the fight. Be a little more aggressive. Use the angles. One foot dueling. Projectile base champions like McCoy. Now going back to this mount. Okay, so here the Raptor control for the first goal hole is huge. You have eyes on the bridge here. You have also eyes on this, uh, on the balcony, new ledge. I'll call that new ledge for you guys. Because uh, when this when this map is actually was a remake and we call it new ledge, because it used to have been just the ledge, but they made it into a new ledge. Um, anyways, but that was the first hold. We played from Raptors, get a good lot of damage off. Uh, one of the biggest things about the end is always being able to deal damage. Uh, and you want to be shooting at someone. You ask, okay, what's the reason? Well, you're always applying cauterize. You're gonna deal damage, making the Ceres have to heal multiple people. She's just, you know, she's a healer, like any healer, right? You spread the heals. It's like, okay, well, now Mako is taking a done damage. The Andrews is taking a damage. Who did I heal? I healed the Andrew, but guess what? I've popped one heal on the uh, Mako, but he's cauterized three, so that heal was kind of useless. But I could keep poking, just keep poking whoever you get. Try to consistently be shooting at someone. I maximize your damage while being positioned to take the least amount of damage. Um, here, you're flanking the right side. We have total control. Uh, luckily, we saw all everyone here, so we control this temple. This temple is huge, good for sniping, still in damage. Like I said, always be shooting. Uh, mistake, I thought I'd be able to uh, take out the Torval, but maybe shooting the Saracen would be better. I, I don't know why he didn't use his reversal. Man, it's I'm getting quite lucky. Yeah, try a little juke the jukes, made him think it was going the other direction. Luckily, he didn't check down there, and luckily nobody was down there, so, you know, it was intuition. I just felt 
as if nobody's gonna go down there. They all went high ground, and then we went down below and got a little nice little juke. Once again, uh, this temple side, once you have control of it, it's gonna allow you to push much much easier. We hear footsteps, so always try to do uh, duel the um, the damage dealers before the tanks. Right, damage is gonna deal the most damage. Um, tanks deal a little less damage, but at the same time they're tankier, right? Take out the uh, make it a one v one as fast as possible, right? Make the fight into a one v one. Whether reposition yourself so you only can see one, only have an angle, take one damage, or take out the one that you can take out the fat quickest, right? That being the damage dealer. I'd have no clue why this ender didn't finish me off, but we got lucky. And my teammates are actually really good. Um, so we rotated around. We 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 kept moving and keeping our distance with the champions, allowing us to still to deal damage while taking less damage. So we want to control that temple, but we couldn't, right? Andrew, <clears throat> let's explain that real quickly, why I went to the bridge. It's a good thing to talk about. Sometimes people will just want to stick something until the end of the time, and they end up losing their life. Here, the reason why I didn't stay up here, and yes, I might have been able to outdo them. Yes, I might be able to fight, even though I missed quite a bit of shots here, is uh, even if I might be winning, the Mctoral might be looking at me. Makoa, uh, their respawns of the uh, Vivian, which is still 10 seconds long time, more serious. Any extra poke will make me lose this fight. And I saw there's one, two, three, and the Ceres was up here healing. Immediately, you would know there's less there's less aggression in this angle. I have I can make this into 1v1. Now I just can have this one angle where he just looks at me. Um I can fight him. Which I can still deal damage to their main. And this is why we rotate around, right? Least amount of resistance. Find a nice little low angle, still little damage, apply cauterize here, maybe look for a little good little flank. I still have health, so I'll wait till I heal passively. I had to take him out. Usually you want to wait until you heal passively or full before you re-engage, you know. That's uh, you know, pick and choose. Try to be all as healthy as possible. But that that's why we moved to the uh, bridge side and don't want damage. This is happened to be a really good game because your teammates were nice. And they played really well. Alright, here we go. Back in the spawn. So guys, if you guys want to see another champion in my mind, it's always going to be unique. It's always going to be different because we are playing uh, the champion into a different comp, a different uh, scenario. Uh, we can have a different healer, which we position yourself a little differently. You can do that. Uh, feel free to champion down below. Uh, try to do more hit scans slash uh, like Bomb King blasters. I'm not there yet. Uh, Eevee, feel free. Almost all the flankers and all the hit scans slash uh, sniper slash arrow base champions. Feel free. I'll be more than happy. If you guys want some help and some ideas, uh, I will work on my blaster craft. It'll be really good. Um, so here we got really lucky. We know there was a duel. So here my decision making was okay. So we have a Makoa here. We know Makoa still has his ultimate. I'm just gonna poke out this Makoa and try to bait out his ultimate. Okay, my teammates are fighting here. We know it's a four v four, and we just saw the Andro dash out out into danger, which is right about here. All right. So let's start from the beginning. Same thing. He got hook again. He's playing McCall. We see that. They're fine again. Here we go. Androx. We saw. We just fit the reversal. There's something you don't want to do, but it was by accident. See, we saw poking the McCall. There's a 4v4 over there. I was debating whether or not to help out, but then I saw the Andro drop. We lost our healer, but we saw the Andro drop and the con ulted. So we can stay here and keep poking out the, uh, the McCall. I trust it. I put faith in my team. Keep the high ground, right? That's a death trap, like we said earlier. Now he's now he's in a bad position. My teammates are rotating back to help out, and we're able to take out the McCall. The McCall was never in that fight. Which gave the double tanks slash drogos the upper hand, right? They're they're healthier, they deal more damage, and they have the con ult just to uh, take them out. Oh, that's unfortunate. Miss those shots. So here, right? Keep looking. Keep looking at dismounts. You know they're gonna come through. Keep looking at your angles. Oops, didn't mean to go so far down. Might as well just play main, I guess. Don't only go back up there. For that reason, get hooked. Throw it back into the favor. McCoy did a good job there, taking him out. That was just a counter out. Oh, I got caught. That feels bad. Okay. Uh, I used my Leon ult. I thought they were a whole W. I might be able to get a free shot, but I didn't want to get pulled by the Sarah's ultimate. Um, good counter. Uh, didn't make anything from it, though. That could live. And my dash clipped the wall, which... Maybe not going anywhere. So once again, we just take the Raptors. Look for a nice little push. My teammates are playing really, really well. And I'm really glad this doesn't usually happen. Um, I'm coming videos. So you guys see. I usually don't have a comp like this when I play casual games. 
Maybe I can make it more in my, in my mind series based on uh, ranked games for you guys. We, we might make that a rule. Oh, got lucky. Got the buoy trap, Vivian. Okay, we rotate around. Sometimes you make the decision to help your teammates out. There, I saw the Andro low. So let's just finish off the Andro and then help out with the Vivian. Uh, when you do duel Vivian, don't forget you can shoot her feet and avoid the uh, the shield, her self shield. Once again, we're having this little fight versus McCall, and we're having trouble aiming right there. Oop, reset my aim. All right, I'm gonna take over. My teammates to collapse. Amazing, well played by my team. I just poke out the stairs real quick. Well, like this angle, like uh, I, I uh, um, well, let's stutter much. This angle here. Like we were talking about earlier, allows us to poke out the people uh, up above. Um, that ledge is really annoying, especially when you're trying to push the payload and they're just shooting you from above your head and shooting you from the bridge, which we call there, and then your torch or fire on the left side. It just makes it push really hard. Here, our payload made it to the second chokehold, so we're going to look for the opportunity once again to push through the temple. We got a nice little precision shot right there that got two targets with one hit. That was, that was really nice. And here we go. We got the temple complete control. We know four are down. The only one left is Torvald, so we can sit here and play a little more aggressive. I just sit this ground here. And that's what I'm saying. Just sit back here. This is an easy game from this point on. Just keep poking. And GG. Hopefully that gameplay will help you guys out. <clears throat> Feel free to ask any questions out in the comments. I would love to help you guys out. Uh, any other questions uh, that you feel like it may be too long for a YouTube comment or, you know, we'll continue on to other conversations feel free to join my discord guys it'll be a lot of fun um ask any questions I'm more than happy to help you guys out with your damage dealers hit scan base arrow bows snipers we'll do a Knesset one really soon and some other champions make it a lot of fun that was a little the end gameplay guys death and taxes uh that's why it's superior man death and taxes are just too strong especially with this high healing high burst meta you need that consistent just damage consistent cauterize and shield break man Massive. Uh, we, we got really lucky this game. Our healers were really good. Uh, we did quite a bit of damage in 10 minutes. We did 80k. Almost 80k. Would have had 80k with all the shots on the Makoa there. But anyways, so guys, thank you so much for watching. Once again, if you guys do enjoy this End My Mind series, which will come out every Friday. I know this one's a little late. Come out a little Saturday. Uh, feel free. Feel, feel free to comment down below. Tell me what champion you would like me to play next. Comment and if you guys do like this, any comments, any ideas you want me to, be, uh, to explain a little bit more, tell me. This is all a learning experience. We're going to improve and make this a little better. Thanks again, guys. Take care. Keep on fragging. Peace.